Last week, the internet exploded with compassion for a three-year-old girl who was mauled by pit bulls and then kicked out of a KFC because her scars were disturbing the customers. This week, that compassion turned into righteous anger as it turned out that the girl's relatives were probably making the entire thing up just to get money. After the little girl's grandmother, Kelly Mullins, put the story online where it gained traction, KFC immediately pledged $30,000 to help with the little girl's medical expenses. And then $100,000 more were brought in just by random people on the internet. But then KFC launched an investigation and they found several surprising facts, like the first uh, KFC that Mullins blamed for this incident had been closed for several years. Also, uh, they checked the security footage in the next store that she blamed, and they couldn't find anyone matching the description of Mullins and her granddaughter, uh, Victoria Wiltshire. They also couldn't even find anybody who had ordered the items that they claimed that they ordered that day. So it looks like this has turned into an important lesson, the kind that comes along, it seems, once every few months or so, that maybe you should be a little skeptical about the things that you are seeing and sharing on social media. Uh, especially be sure to look into those details before you start pledging money to what seems to be a good cause. The other thing I find interesting about this story, though, is that now we have several outlets reporting that the whole thing is a hoax. However, those outlets still seem to accept the facts behind the initial story of the little girl getting mauled by the pit bulls. And that story seems to go something like, uh, oh, this poor little girl uh, had a dangerous family pet. The pet suddenly and out of nowhere attacked her, and now she may be disfigured for life. And you can see that narrative playing out in articles like this one from Time, in which they use it as a jumping off point to talk about the problem of pit bulls. It's incredible to me that even now when we have reasonable proof that this girl's family are a horrible bunch of monsters, uh, that we seem to continue accepting this narrative of these uh, previously not at all violent dogs suddenly going crazy and knocking down a door in order to attack a defenseless toddler. But when you look at the actual facts, again, much like the KFC story, that narrative starts to break down. What you actually find when you search for the articles that came out around the initial attack, uh, you'll see that the girl's grandfather is the one who kept the pit bulls, and he had 10 pit bulls at the time, uh, nine of which were almost constantly locked up in cages in the backyard. The other one was considered the pack leader uh, and was, according to his roommates at the time, an incredibly violent and scary dog. His roommate told the local reporters that he didn't know what this guy had been doing to these dogs, but he definitely shouldn't have them. You'll also see, according to those initial articles, the little girl was left alone with this aggressive dog in the house. In fact, the grandfather and his girlfriend were arrested afterward for child endangerment because of that. So we don't know what the toddler was doing with the dog, if she was just minding her own business or doing that thing that toddlers do, where they climb all over everything and try to stick things in their mouths and poke at things. Uh, we don't know what happened. So this isn't the story of a beloved family pet out of nowhere turning and attacking a defenseless toddler. In fact, this is the story most likely of a man who was extremely cruel and possibly abused a bunch of dogs, which turned them vicious and then left a toddler alone with them. So maybe instead of talking about the pit bull problem we have, uh, outlets like Time should be talking about the human being problem we have. Because yes, pit bulls have been bred to be fighters, and for that reason, maybe you shouldn't own one unless you are trained to be able to give one of these amazing animals a loving home. 
And for animals, any dogs uh, with a violent past and with uh, elevated aggression, maybe you shouldn't own them if you have small children or small animals that they might go after. And yes, as the Time article makes very clear, statistics show that pit bulls are implicated in more attacks on humans than any other breed of dog. But what the Time article does not mention is that there have also been several studies that have shown that the owners of pit bulls and other uh, notably uh, aggressive dogs tend to uh, have a criminal record and also to display antisocial behaviors. So we have to remember that, again, this isn't necessarily a pit bull problem. What it comes down to is this being a human problem. So how do we fix this? Well, it's simple, in theory. Uh, we stop shitheads from owning dogs. For a start, support your local humane society. Have your own pet spayed or neutered. Don't get a pet from a backyard or from Craigslist. And if you see some asshole keeping vicious dogs in tiny cages all day, do something. Call the Humane Society. Call Animal Control. Don't wait for another toddler to get their face chewed off and for a thousand more articles to be written about the problem with pit bulls because nobody wins in that circumstance, uh, least of all the toddlers and the pit bulls.